Hey, we are live. Let me know if you can see me all right. I think this is pretty good. We'll find out soon. It's so bright out here. How are you guys doing? Happy Sunday. It is perfect in Arizona right now. We've got um, spring training going on. We've got perfect weather. Uh, this is like the time of year to be here. This is it's perfect. Every day is perfect. Hey, JW, how's it going? What's it like where you guys are? Oh, we got six people. This is awesome. And by the way, I'm going to show you guys a ton of stuff I got from Grand Habano. This is killer. Hey, Seagar. How's it going, Steve? Show over here. Oh, snow over here, probably. Pete, what's up? Oh, I'm Hames. <laughs> Hames. Um, yeah, so we're going to do all kinds of stuff. We're going to cut up some cigars for fun, um, make them smaller, shorter. I got a few Nika Rusticas I'm going to cut up here so that way I can have like a shorter morning smoke. We're going to glue it together. And let's see here. What's up, Cody? How's it going? And Snuffleupagus, how's it going? And let's see here. Can you see this? It's like perfect out here. Look at this. I mean, perfect outside. Yeah, the pool looks pretty good. You know, you have to run the pool like all winter even though you can't swim in it. So it's expensive, but it, I mean, it looks pretty. It looks really pretty, doesn't it? So we've got all kinds of stuff from Grand Habano. Let's see here. I've been gone a long time. I was gone, look at this. Oh my gosh, I think it's destroyed. This is the Grand Reserva 2012. The head looks like it's a little messed up. But um, yeah, wish it looked like that in Virginia. Yeah, well, pretty soon it's going to be too hot to even be outside here, so Virginia might not be too bad. Looks delicious. Yes, we have their blue label here. It's called the Blue Green. That looks pretty good from them. They sent this thing, La Conquista. That looks really good. I'm digging the, uh, the, the cedar sleeves here. Rainy cold here. Looks good though. Yeah, awesome. Let's see, what else did they send? They sent this Habano number three. I've had the number five. The number three looks really good. Uh, I'm gonna cut up the cigars to make them smaller. I'm gonna make, I bought a box of Nika Rusticas. And so I'm gonna cut them to make them like, you know, a, a shorter smoke. I've got 25 of them, so I figured I'd try it. I know, normally it's a major no-no, but we're gonna try it. I'm gonna see if it's, I'm gonna see if it, how it works. We got a Grand Habano, Connecticut. That looks beautiful. I've had the Corojo, so this is the Connecticut version. Uh, let's see here. This is the Habano number three. Beautiful. Yeah, we do what we want here. This is when you got when you got 25 of them, you can spare a few. Uh, so yeah, we got a lot of stuff. They also sent a lot of my, these are my, my my favorite from them, number fives. And, well, we're gonna try this. Grand Reserva today because it's like 10 years old. Let's see here, 2012. So I guess it's been aged for quite a while too. So yeah, let's take this puppy off. Man, what I'm so excited. So sometimes you gotta really finagle. There we go. I can't take off the. <laughs> yeah, so sometimes you just cut them for fun. Sometimes you cut them to make sure they're legit. If you got cigar glue like me, you can cut them and not worry about it. Beautiful. Yeah, the head looks kind of damaged here. Here's my glue. I, I have a link in the description for this. It's called Perfect Repair. It's cigar glue with some like cellulose fiber. So you can fix things like that. Old cigars get kind of brittle. Yeah, cigar glue. Check it out. I got a link below if you want to check it out. And uh, this is what I use to repair cigars. Also, if you want to cut your own and then re-glue them together, you could do that too. You can make two shorter cigars. Yeah, check it out. Uh, perfect Repair. Can you see that? Well, you probably can't see that. Perfect Repair. It's pretty cool. It's really, it's actually really cool. Okay. So I guess this number, Grand Habano, Grand Reserva 2012 is brand new since November. can see this is all messed up here. 
This is why I like cigars coming in cellophane, just because you're more likely to keep it nice. Uh, let's see. A box of the Grand Habanos. I don't know. They, they sent it in. I don't really know how much they are. Uh-oh, my glue is glued shut. Maybe I can't... Shoot. Never had this happen before. Let's see here. Oh. If it's good, I'm going to get... Yeah, I'm going to... We're going to light it up here in a second. We just got to fix it before I smoke it. Throw it in the pool. Eh, I don't know if I want to do that. It's like completely, it looks like a little nail polish bottle. Well, it's glued shut. So maybe right now we'll just light this up and see what happens. Maybe it's not as bad as it looks. You know, every time I go live, something weird happens. So my lighter goes out. Sometimes. Sometimes the lighter goes out, sometimes my light goes out, sometimes... Sometimes the glue is shut. The glue takes about a minute to dry. Well, it depends how hot it is outside. It takes about a minute or two. You can roll with it, but uh, I would just use pectin for rolling. This is more for like touch-ups because it's more expensive and it comes with a little applicator. So. That's what I would do. Yeah, see, this is shredding on me here. It's got a huge cap on there. The cap was almost too big for the cigar. So it was already kind of loose to begin with. But let's see here. Mm-hmm. Well, I, have, I haven't used it in like six months. So maybe, maybe that's why it's glued shut. I don't know. Maybe I'll microwave it for like a minute. I don't know. Mm. Well, the tobacco, this is actually was shipped back and forth. They sent it to my P.O. box, but my P.O. box, for whatever reason, the P.O. box, for whatever reason, they don't accept outside packages, only U USPS. And I didn't know that, unless you, like, ask specifically for it. So it went back and forth, like, four times. I just gave them my home address. So that could be why it's messed up. It also could be messed up because these leaves are super old. Um, they're like eight or nine years old, so they're just thin to begin with. I mean, you could see how thin they are. Super thin. Not all of them are going to be like that, but I just, you know, it just happens to be this one. You know, this one over here doesn't look like that. The flavors are good, though. The flavors are delicious. Okay. Yeah, if your cigars come hot, got to wet it all down here. <laughs> if, your, if your cigars come hot or cold, you know, it, shipping cigars is actually not good for them. So, but so far it's good. It's like super cedary. The cedar sleeve has like that cedar spice uh, kind of cinnamon flavors, but it's pretty good. So this should be the best cigar they have out of all of these. Um, and from what I've been told is, you know, this is like Costa Rican and Nicaraguan tobaccos and, um, man, it's good. I haven't had a cigar in a while and, um, most of their stuff is actually really affordable. So, uh, I would definitely check out their website. So far, so good. If I can only get this open. Oh, here we go. Here we go. <coughs> There's so much damage here. Okay. Let's see here. I don't know if that'll help at all because it's just kind of like exploded. Good thing the uh, binder didn't crack or anything. It's just the, the wrapper. It's just, it's a cosmetic thing, you know? So that happens. It tastes great though. Cedary, kind of earthy, kind of cinnamon me. The website for Grand Habano, I don't know. I'm assuming it's grandhabano.com. I would assume. This is, uh, I have this on Amazon. This is Perfect Repair. 
Is that what you're talking about? Let's see here. I'm just gonna cover the whole thing just because I'm worried that I'm <laughs> I'm worried that it's just gonna explode. With you know when you're when you light a cigar, it, it expands and contracts. Okay, we'll try that for now. But we gotta let this cool off. But yeah, what, what we'll do is we'll shake this little bottle up. There's a little bead in there. So yeah, but so far, okay, so the Grand Habano, my real thoughts. Uh, I've had two or three of their cigars. They're all really affordable. They all tasted pretty good. Um, none of them ha have had this issue, so I wanted to show you the worst. This is the worst, okay? They seem like a pretty good company. I like how they have, you know, cedar sleeves and all other cigars. I, I like that. Yeah, people, a lot of people are at church. You know, I, I haven't been live in like two weeks. I was in San Francisco, or I was in San Diego for a conference. I haven't posted in a while. Uh, so yeah, I hit 10,000 subscribers. That was awesome. Thank you guys. You can see how it dries. It looks kind of white-ish. Come on, buddy. Come on. Yeah, so really, I can't thank you guys enough for 10,000 subscribers. Like, I've been doing this a long time, and it's finally like you, you start to hit milestones. You know? I would tell you this, guys, though, right now, your first 100 subscribers is harder than your first 10,000. And so I think it just, oh look at the whole cap came off. I think it's time just to get rid of that cap. <laughs> yeah, I was in San Diego for a huge conference and traffic and conversion. I learned about how to better my business as a YouTuber. And um, yeah, then I was doing this and this and this. And so now I'm finally back. Um, I got a brand new wine door. I'm going to show you guys that tomorrow. And then on Tuesday or Wednesday, I'm going to show you guys our new mattress. And so, yeah, there's just a lot going on. But 10,000, like, seriously, the first 100 is harder than your first 10,000 because, you know, people share your videos and it's easier to get them viewed. And after you, you know, you get really good at it, you get a rhythm. You're going to be, uh, you know, I don't know. I just think my first 1,000 happened a lot faster than my first 100. If you get 10, that's hard, you know. 10 is difficult. I think I had 100 subscribers for like three years, you know. So it's definitely a long game. You know, YouTube is a marathon, not a sprint. Um, I tell people... You know, just keep doing it. You're gonna keep learning, you know. Um, I just got like more music from my channel. I got more um, software for it. I got a ton of, you know, mastermind classes and I got new cameras and I got a new hard drive last night. So I'm always reinvesting. And so just take it one step at a time. You know, I did everything on this phone for a l the longest time. So, but one day you, if you wanna be YouTuber, you can do it. I'm telling you, if I, if I can do it, you can do it. Kind of windy today. Tastes really good. It's like creamy, earthy, cinnamon, uh, cedar. I mean, it tastes. It tastes very good. Yeah, this. Well, I think the wind lit it badly, and then the head popped right off. This cigar. Tastes great, but it doesn't, I mean, it's in bad shape. You can see what the glue looks like. It's keeping it together. So, you know, keep that in mind. Even if you completely lose your wrapper or whatever, you got a hole in your cigar, this stuff is really a miracle worker. I mean, it's smoking great. We're gonna cut cigars in half and make them smaller in a second. Mm-hmm. It's 
It's actually um, it's actually a nice mild cigar. I like that, you know. It's not too late in the day. It's kind of mild. Let's see here. Got some Abelure. We're gonna let that kind of aerate a little bit. Let's see. I'll make this the ashtray. Cheers to the weekend. I love that stuff. It's the Abelure 12 year. If you guys are wondering like where to start with scotches, get something like this. You won't regret it. It's a it's a Highland single malt, okay? So it's not super peaty. It's actually it's it's relatively sweet. This is more like a bourbon in a lot of ways than a scotch. Uh, no, this is, oh, good question. It does look like an atomic bomb, look at that. But I, you know, I try to keep it honest here, okay? I used to be honest cigar reviews, so people send stuff in and I really do give my honest opinion and I, I really try to show things, like this is real life, you know? Uh, stuff happens. So that's why, you know, stuff like this, I'm, I'm like, I'm a cigar nerd, so stuff like this really is awesome. But, um, yeah, so I don't do this full-time. My full-time job, I'm a social worker, so I help kids get adopted. But I do this, you know, 30, 20, 20 to 25 hours a week. Not 30, maybe, maybe, maybe 15 to 25. So, but I do both, you know. You don't make a lot as a social worker, so you got to supplement. Plus, this is really fun. But maybe one day. Maybe one day I'd be full-time. I mean, I could go full-time right now, but, um, I don't know. Is the wind noise really bad right now? Let me know. Ugh. I don't drink booze, I start drinking sparkling water. Yeah, uh, this is my sparkling water. I made it out of a soda stream. I put some lime in there, so it's kind of like, uh, flavored in a way. It's pretty good. I have not tried the Havana Seed Tabernacle. Maybe I should though. This is pretty good. I'm actually really liking this. It's kicking up in, in uh, body right now. Now it's more medium bodied. Um, so yeah, we're gonna, I got a box of these Nika Rusticas and I wanna see if I can cut them in half and glue the wrapper back on so I can make mini cigars. You know, just, we're gonna try it, just a few of them. I have never tried yoo chocolate milk with a cigar. Sounds good though, anything chocolate is amazing with cigars. Let me see here. Got a nice Nika Rustica. These are just awesome Drew Estate products. And um, I really recommend them because it, you know, these are like on cigar bed for like a hundred bucks, a whole box, you can't beat it. Okay, we're gonna cut it in half. Does that look like it's in half? Somewhere around there is half. This feels, I've never done this before, but this feels really wrong. Okay, here I go. Oh man, I hate doing this. Oh, that feels bad. That feels really, I should be, someone should sue me. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, so the wrapper is staying on but I'm gonna glue it down just to make sure. So you gotta shake up your bottle, okay? There's a little ball bearing in there. It's kind of stuck right now. Okay, and we're gonna lift up the wrapper just a little bit. Can you see that? Just a little bit, we're gonna lift it up. <laughs> this is what you do for views, by the way. If you wanna, you, you, you gotta do crazy stuff for views. We're gonna put some of this underneath to simulate right, see if how that works okay maybe this will be like another short cigar so that's the idea that way it's like you know for morning smokes you can have a shorter morning cigar he would have Monaco <laughs> Uh, don't get it on your finger. Yeah, there we go. So look at that. Now I got two baby cigars for breakfast, you know. 
And this could be like a 20 minute smoke, you know? Definitely unorthodox, but it, it works. We're gonna try that a few times. Okay. Let's see. This, and these are great cigars. They, I love Broadleaf. Broadleaf is actually my favorite cigar, or favorite leaf. Let's see here. Uh oh. Hmm. This one's a little bit big. Come on. Come on. Oh, there we go. Come on, almost there. I think these are like 60 or 58. So we're cutting it close. Okay. Let's see. Is that about, is that even? Something like that. It's about even. Okay, we got two smaller ones. All right. Now we got a lift. And just like that, we got two baby cigars. Yeah, these are the El Brujito 6x52. I thought my Zycar would actually would fit them better. Let's see here. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I think that's half. And there's another half. Perfect. Good morning smokes. And these are like, you know, four or five bucks a stick. So now it's like, I don't really mind cutting them up, making them smaller, you know? We'll experiment with that. Anyway, um, yeah, you know, whatever. They're, they're medium mild bodied cigars anyway. Well, actually no, those are full bodied. So I don't mind making them smaller for breakfast. We'll see how it goes. Sometimes you just don't have time for an hour cigar, you know? So we'll see if cutting them in half is good. The flavor on this is unique because it tastes aged, and but the finish is very, very mild and short. I don't know. It's kind of it's weird because every puff is different. Maybe the next puff will be better. This one, this last puff was a little bland. All right, have you guys seen this thing right here? This is also called the Perfect Repair. I've done videos on these things. Check that out. It's a little skewer. So you stick that in your cigar, you could fix the draw. So these two products right here. I bring them with me everywhere I go because they save the cigars. Oh, cigar down. Oh, see, this is bad. Yeah, perfect draw. Check it out. I think there's a link below. You can get them right below. I think you can get them on Amazon. Man, this thing's smoking like a chimney. You know, if these are like six or seven dollars, these are definitely a buy. But if this was like fifteen dollars, I don't know. I don't know. We'll figure that out. Save the ginger souls. Have you ever tried Southern Draw? I have not. People keep asking me 
to try the same cigars. So these are the cigars I need to buy. Uh, Tabernacle, Southern Draw. Um, I gotta get some, people are asking me to get uh, Filthy Hooligan for uh, St. Patrick's Day. People ask me to get, um, you know, like more rare stuff. I need to get that stuff. Normally cigars, companies just send stuff and then that's kind of like what I smoke. So um, that's the only bad part is that, you know, you, I, I wish I could just, I don't know, I got so much stuff I got to smoke already, you know what I mean? Alienta. Hey Ruben, how's it going? eBay for 10 bucks. Huh, what's on eBay for 10? Oh, perfect draw, eBay, $10. Amazon, I like the Prime because that's I'm an Amazon guy, but yeah, check out eBay too if you want. Check out the Amazon link below. Uh, let's see here, um, it might be cheaper, I don't know. La Routin Dirt Torpedo by Drew Estate, Sweet Jane by Deadwood. Sweet Jane, uh, I've heard of that one too a few times heard of that a few times let's see here I'm really interested to try their Connecticut actually because the Corojo is really good and really strong but if it was more mild this, this would be a killer one so let me show you what the glue looks like I put the glue on the outside so you can see it it's kind of white you don't have to do that um, you know, you could, you could brush it away with your saliva there. Now it's gone. Perfect. All right, shoot some more questions here. I wish I had somebody here, like, doing a show. That'd be cool, wouldn't it? I could be like Tim, see? I almost get like caramel notes out of this thing. Caramel cinnamon. What's going on in today's live? Oh, how's it going, Ruben? Okay, Ruben, if you missed it, we got a huge goodie bag from Grand Habano. I'm going over all their stuff they sent me. Corojo number five I've tried before. Today we're trying their brand new Grand Reserva number five, or number five, yeah, this is 2012. So this is an old, old tobacco here. I was telling people about the perfect repair to fix the cigar because it blew up on me. And then I cut a bunch of Nica Rusticas in half so that way I can have morning cigars, short morning sticks. So I glued those together. Yeah, it's, free it's freezing here. It's like, guys, it's like 70 degrees or 80 degrees. It's freezing. For us, that is kind of cold, actually. Yeah. I'm under my huge umbrella right now. That was a really cool product. If you guys check out that video too, because this thing has been a game changer for cigars, especially when it's super hot out. It's it's super nice. You guys, if you haven't been to Phoenix, you gotta come. Uh, you can go down to Tucson, you can go you can go up to Flagstaff, and it's completely different worlds. You know, in Flagstaff, it's like Colorado. Down here, you know, you're in a desert. So you should, you know, guys, definitely check out Arizona. They got the Grand Canyon, obviously. They got Sedona is amazing. Uh, I don't know. It just seems like a pretty cool state. I just moved here a couple years ago, three years ago. See, now I'm in the sun, so it's getting hot. So what is your guys' favorite video I've ever done? Let me know. Jeez. Green Hornet? Never heard of it. Sounds good. The Green Hornet. The Green Hornet. The Green Hornet. I think 
I saw that movie with Seth Rogen. That was pretty good. Mm. Raymond says, his favorite video I've ever done was my dad's first cigar. That's an awesome video. My dad thought cigars were like cigarettes, and he was just like, they're disgusting, they're dirty. And I'm like, it's not really what you think it is. It's a premium product, you know. It's not, you know, it's like scotch. You know, I don't chug scotch every day. I, I sip it, you know. And it's ultra refined. It's really high quality. Cigars are the same way. I have one a week maybe. I, I you know, I sip on the flavors. It's So I, I'm going to definitely do more videos like that. Um... And that was my dad's real reaction. He was like, man, it tastes like coffee. And I'm like, yeah, that's the point. You know, it's, it's not, it shouldn't just taste like burnt leaves, you know. There's actually characteristics to cigars. Pete loves my cigar rolling videos. People keep asking about that. I'm going to do more. Here's the problem with cigar rolling is it takes a long time. You got to get really good at it. It takes a whole day to prep the tobacco. And uh, if you're going to do it, you got to spend a whole day. And recently, I haven't really had time to spend a whole day. Because if you roll one or two cigars, you know, it takes like a few hours. If you roll 20 of them, it takes like maybe four for me. So you really got to, you know, spend four or five hours. And your first cigars suck. I'm going to do more of those. My wife has never smoked. Sh My wife has tried uh, a few cigars, but she doesn't want to. She thinks, you know, most girls, it's just kind of dirty for them. It, yeah, I don't know. She's a singer too. She's, she's worried it's going to mess up her vocal cords. So, I mean, I don't inhale, so, but yeah, so she's not really into it, but she'll, you know, she'll sit out here with me. Mm-hmm. All right, I'm getting, I'm getting roasted alive here. Okay, let's see. Can I, let's see if I should move. Mm, I know. We'll just move the entire, well, I'll move the entire rig here. Oh, now I'm back in the shade. It was getting hot. Yeah, so my wife, she just, you know, she's not, it's not her thing, you know. Most wives, they tolerate it, <laughs> you know. That's, a, I mean, that's my experience. Um, I've got, okay, so here's my demographics, right? 80% men, 20% women. So, yeah, most women don't even care about cigars. Oh, let's see here. Um, when you, you should sell her guy. Well, you should get her out there, sing while you do some lives. Yeah, she, she'd be great. My wife's a great singer. She wants to do more um, singing on her channel. She's got a, a YouTube channel. And I play guitar, so we were talking about doing covers. And then um, she's busy as a teacher, so that didn't really happen. So we're, but we'll figure something out for her channel. Uh, let's see here. I also liked your Winador videos. They inspired me to do the same. I have three. Yeah, so we're doing another Winador. Um, uh, New Air just sent another one. So it has heating. And um, I edited the video last night. Tomorrow it has to go out. Um, it has to get approved by them. But uh, yeah, so you're going to see more of that. Like, it's, it's pretty awesome. And I shot a really fun little intro with it. It's kind of crazy. You can buy you can buy a wine door now, completely set up. All you gotta do is season it. It's got everything you need, heating and everything, and it it works like instantly. I put it in my garage, and it was staying 65 degrees even though it was 40 degrees at night. So it's pretty awesome as a heater. And in the summertime, I don't know if it's gonna be. It's probably gonna be too hot for it. But in the summertime, I'm gonna bring that wine door inside. Um, so that way it's not just burning the engine out, but it's a killer. I mean, it's really the CC 100. I think there's a link below for the old model uh, CC 300. They're, they're pretty awesome and now they're making them even better. So real Spanish cedar. Stay tuned for that one tomorrow. Mm-hmm. So the wine door has Spanish S Spanish cedar shelves. So you gotta season them just like any other wood product. You have to 
distilled, to, you know, wipe them to, with distilled rags, distilled water and rags. Let it soak overnight. Then you can add your cigars or whatever. And man, it smells good. It smells like really spicy, nice cedar. So um, I actually had to buy custom shelves for my wine adore. With that, it's like built in. So the price is actually pretty good when you consider how much it costs to build custom shelves. Um, now they're not the best shelves because you know they're they're a little thinner, but for the price, you really can't beat it. Uh, let's see here. Uh, there you go. Since you play guitar, have Tim. Yeah, Tim. Tim was a worship. He used to be a worship pastor. I played a lot of worship on, on a lot of teams, um, played guitar for a long time. So we were, we were joking, we're like, dude, Tim, we're actually like a lot alike. I mean, we both come from like ministry backgrounds, music, we both do YouTube and cigars. And um, so yeah, Tim is definitely a brother from another mother. Let's see here, uh, your stepdad's home and cigar room, pretty amazing. Yeah, Michael is my stepdad, awesome. Killer, their house is so cool, it's a lighthouse, okay. And they set up their room with the glass floor. It's the coolest room. We were even wondering if we should share that video because, you know, we're not really pretentious people, you know. But it's a really inspirational room. It's really cool. And uh, it's definitely a dream uh, to have a, a cigar room on top of a, you know, in a lighthouse. That's so cool. You don't, you never see that, especially with a glass floor. So he was kind of worried that if I posted that video, people would think, um, like, oh, look at me, we've got this, you know. It's really not about that. We just wanted to share how cool it was because it's been a long time to make it that way, you know. Mm-hmm. I got my drone right up there, and I flew it right in and right around. And what, there was the first video I did, he was actually waving, like, come on. Like, he was getting annoyed with me because he was smoking a cigar, and I wanted to get the, the, the drone shot around the house while it was still sunset but i had to call i had to get approval from the local um airport because there's planes fly right over the house so i had to get approval for that and he's like come on come on so i actually I flew up to the window you can actually see michael going come on he's like doing this you know um so we were like two floors below him you know and that was pretty that was pretty a surreal moment when you're flying your drone and you're like looking around this lighthouse and to them, that's just their house. My parents have just a really cool house. To me, it's like, wow, you know. We're actually going back there in July, so we're gonna do more videos, and they just got a new boat. So we're gonna do cigars and boats and more drone stuff, and it'll be fun. It'll be really fun. Uh, let's see here, the burn, pretty good. Not the, not, I, I didn't have the greatest light, and it just fell on the ground, but. It's pretty decent so far. The, the aroma on the cigar is actually really, really nice. Yep, and then, um, let's see, what else is new? I learned a lot about, um, so, I was at this traffic and conversion summit in San Diego, and I'm trying to figure out how to separate my my mattresses and my cigars, because you guys watch the cigar stuff, but I, I do a lot of mattresses and stuff like that too, and sleeping products and vlogs. So I'm wondering if I should, I've been doing this for like years, trying to figure out what to do with it. And I just put them all on the same channel. So I'm trying to figure out what the heck, you know, maybe I'll make like a Facebook group for my cigar stuff. You know, I'll have a community there and a Facebook group for my sleeping products. I just don't want to start all over. I don't want to, you know, I don't really want to start my whole channel from scratch if I don't have to, or start a new one from scratch. This is finally starting to really open up now. Uh, let's see here. I love that scotch. Sweet, malty, very malty. People are like, what's malty? Well, malty is like, I don't know how to describe it other than it's kind of sweet. Okay, let's see here, what else? We got 11 people. See, live feeds are kind of weird when you're doing it by yourself. Um, I should probably have like a written script or something because it's just me chatting. Let's see, my, my personal favorite video 
it, it was, uh, I've got a lot of them. Um, when we did Page, Arizona, we were flying the, uh, we were doing stuff up there. That was really cool. My cigar for St. Patrick's Day. Um, I'm gonna, actually I have my St. Patrick's pipe. I'm gonna smoke a pipe for St. Patrick's Day. I think it's more fitting anyway, don't you think? It's a green Chris Morgan pipe. It's a little stubby. It's, it's like my favorite, because I, I dyed it green, so you're gonna see that for St. Patrick's Day. Yeah, if you guys don't have a pipe, just pick one up. Get a corn cob pipe. Get a Missouri Meerschaum corn cob, and just get some, you know, English blend. Try it out. You might really like pipes too. Let's see here. Oh man, I just want to relax. I just want to chill. Oh yeah, this is. Oh yeah, this is something. This is. We're living the life. <laughs> yeah, you got to get a pipe. How's the pipe experience? I've been thinking about trying it. So I tell this to people over and over. Pipes are very different than cigars. You got to kind of maintain the lighting and you really, you know, it's just pipes are more like meditative, but they're definitely fun and they're a lot cheaper than cigars. Just definitely pick one up. Uh, Oliver says, is the CC300H worth the price or should I get the regular CC300? So, the H is really nice if you want if you need heat. Um, I don't really need heat because I live in Arizona. Um, but if you're if you have drastic changes, you know, um, and you want to keep it in your garage, it has been killer. Um, if you want to keep it inside in a super, you know, uh, like let's say your house is perfectly you know 70 all year, you might not need the H. Um, but I do like the drawers that come with the H model. Uh, let's see here. How long would the corn cob pipe last? Uh, when you're smoking a pipe, they last about maybe 30 minutes. But the actual cob itself will last years and years. A Missouri Meerschaum is a super hard uh, corn cob. And um, they're bred for smoking out of. So, you know, I've had some for like five years and they're still super, you know, they don't have any holes in them or anything. So corn cob pipes can last a lifetime, really. I've got some vintage ones and they still smoke great and they're from like the 50s. So corn cob pipes are great too because you don't have to, you don't. Corn cob pipes are great too because you don't have to um, uh, break it in. They just, they work straight out of the box. You know, they're just, they're great. Is smoking from a corn cob a healthier option? Uh, no. I mean, you're not inhaling the, the tobacco, so no. Either way, it's 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 the same. It's just one is like you know corn cob and one's briar. It's the same exact concept. Just briar. Sometimes you have to kind of break it in and kind of get the get the carbon kind of built up around it a little bit, so it's a drier smoke. Um, but corn cobs are great. Yeah, I don't think it's healthier. People do, they put filters in their pipes. I don't do that. I think filters are for like, you know, people like in the 50s and 60s would put filters in their pipes because they had these, you know, really, really uh, flavored tobaccos that were really goopy and the goopy, uh, you know, sugar buildup and all that. That's what that's for. And people were smoking cigarettes. So the filter was designed to help you inhale. You know, I don't do that. But I'm getting, I'm getting one. Name a tobacco that's good that doesn't have to be beginner. Um, I would say Dunhill, Dunhill early morning pipe, early morning pipe tobacco is good. Dunhill nightcap is great. Uh, Fusilier, Fusilier's rations great. Uh, pretty much anything that's popular is really really good. So get an English blend and then get like a like a vanilla, you know, aromatic blend. Okay, this is a good one. Travis, having some irregularities in my humidor, two humidifiers using Thompson 70 gel. Any tips? So gel, I've had I've had more issues with gel than any other humidification device. They work for some people, they don't work for me. Um, gel puts off a lot, a lot of humidity. 
And um, so I would say just get some beads, get some, you know, heartfelt beads, call it a day. You know, get some Boveda and heartfelt beads. Those are, those are the most consistent for me. Uh, I use Cigar Oasis too, and that just shoots humidity up and then the Boveda packs absorb it. Um, but it's not needed. You can just get a bunch of humidor beads and that should solve your problem. Uh, also, re-season your humidor. If you haven't seasoned your humidor in years and, it, and it's dried out for a season and then you put, you know, just re-season it, that should help a lot. Yeah, Boveda is like the most expensive, but the most foolproof, you know. You can't go wrong with it. Um, I know guys who just have a bunch of acrylic jars and they put a Boveda pack and that's it. And it works great for them. So definitely do that if, um, you know, or just re-season your humidor and throw some Bovedas in there. You'll be great. Chocolate pipe tobacco. Um, I've got two blends. Samuel Gawith chocolate flake, which is not really chocolate. They just call it chocolate flake. Um, it's pretty good. I think they call it chocolate flake. It's more like the color of chocolate. It's very good. I also have a uh, McBaron chocolate flake or chocolate tobacco. That one's really like, it's like smoking brownies, but you can get tongue bite. So uh, you have to smoke it slower. So think about that. Like if it's flavored, you might, you're more likely to get tongue bite. And that's like a chemical burn on your tongue from the flavors. So just smoke it slow, you know, and you should be good. You should be good. Man, this is really nice. Um, I've heard that these actually had issue, uh, issues, like the last, the last one they put out. It's kind of bland. It's not this one's not that bland. I mean, it's it's aged. It's not bland. There's a, there's a difference there. There's a big difference. Let's see here. Um, what else? I'm looking at my yard, thinking, oh man, I got look at all these weeds. I gotta. I just took all these weeds out, and then like. A month later they're all back and man it sucks maybe I'll just wait for summertime and then it'll just burn them all away but I got I gotta do some weeding again this thing's getting a little spicier I'm gonna put it down for a little bit it's strange, it had a really amazing section and then right here it tastes a little bit bitter. So sometimes when that happens, you just gotta put the cigar down a little bit, let it rest, and then you come back to it. Oh, the wind's kicking up. I need to get my ass tray, my ass tray. Check this out, Grand Habano also sent a lighter. Isn't that cool? I think it's refill. Yeah, you can refill this one. GH, here's the website, ghcigars.com. Check out their website. Let me try this lighter here. This might be good for like touch ups. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, what did I miss? Quickly. What do I do for a living? Ruben, I just answered that. Um, my day job is a social worker. I help kids get adopted. I, I take pictures and videos and I, uh, I kind of play matchmaker. And um, so, so yeah, I do that. Like, and then my other, you know, my other stuff is YouTube. Um, so yeah, but doing that is great because I've, I've gotten really good at video and, fo and photos. And it's really cool getting kids adopted and using that skill. And then, um, and then, yeah, and then I do this. I do this 20 hours a week. So it's, it's kind of cool because the, the job is really rewarding. It's really hard, but um, I like being really flexible. I can work from home a few days a week and then I'm driving around meeting kids all week. Um, but yeah, it's a great job. Uh, let's see here. The ash is about to fall. It might, it might. Uh, Travis is quickly outgrowing his 30 count humidor. Any suggestions on getting a new one? Yeah, um, there's a link below for the CC100. And 
it's awesome. It's like a smaller humidor. It holds maybe like 100 cigars. It's got heat. If you want to get the H model, get, get, them, get the H model. So I always tell people, get double what you think you're going to need because you outgrow humidor. I've outgrown like three or four humidors. If I would have just bought a big one, I would have been set. I would have saved money, not had to worry about it. You know, if I buy a box of like Nika Rusticas now, no big deal. I can just sh I can sh shove a whole box in there and not even think about it. Um, you know, when someone sends like a bunch of cigars, you know, they sent like 10 or 20 of them. No big deal. I can just shove it. I get, I give them, I can give it its whole shelf. You know what I mean? So definitely get a wine door. Um, I think that's kind of the future. And the ones I've tried are actually really good. I mean, they, they hold humidity well. Uh, let's see here. Uh, any idea of a popper tobacco banana stock from? Uh, yeah, so Samuel Gawith, a lot of these pipe tobaccos are kind of, it did, it was ready to fall. A lot of these pipe tobaccos are becoming more and more uh, under regulation, and these companies are going out of business. Dunhills, they're not going to make tobacco anymore. Um, uh, I don't know about Sam McGawith, but a lot of these companies are just kind of fading, you know. Pipe tobacco, pipe pipes in general are becoming less popular, and tobacco regulations are becoming more and more prevalent. So you have a dying, essentially you have a dying uh, industry. So, so yeah. But there's a lot of companies here in the U.S. that are that are thriving still. Um, so don't don't give up hope. Any idea? Uh, airtight. Yeah, so the wine doors I have are airtight, just as airtight as anything else. Um, if you want, you can actually, um, the one I have now actually has a lock, and it kind of keeps the door shut. Um, so that's been really helpful. Um, yeah, I wouldn't worry too much about it. Airtight's pretty nice. I had a, a humidor from CheapHumidors.com, and I'm actually selling that right now. But um, it was all right. It's kind of cheap. It didn't have the perfect seal, but it worked. I'm kind of like a broken record. I say the same stuff over and over again. But um, I just all I, all I can tell you guys is what I know, what what works for me, and so yeah. Here's a tip: if you sparkling. Yeah, Pete. Pete's right. Wine doors with Boveda, great. They work. You know, if you're looking for a, a no hassle, you know, Boveda is the way to go. No hassle. You know, you just throw them in there. You can rehydrate them. Some people don't recommend it. I've had the same Boveda packs for years. Okay. Um, I use them as limiters. I use Boveda packs as restrictors. If I have too much humidity, they absorb it. Um, some people think that's wrong. You can rehydrate it. I don't see anything wrong with that. Um, and then the temperature is perfect with the wine door, so you don't have to worry about that. So um, if you just want to set it and forget it, that's the way to go. This is getting really. This is getting really good again. It's you know what it is. I think it's it's days like this that like that's why I love Arizona is because of days like this. Let's see what else is new. I'm really interested in trying this. Where'd it go? I've heard some good things about these blue greens from Gran Habano. Maybe I'll review that one next. That one definitely should be a winner here. So far, it's a good cigar, though. I just wish I had a little bit more complexity for being aged. I'm a newer pipe smoker, never got to try any Dunhill or McClellan. I really hope this doesn't happen. Um, 
Yeah, McBaron's good because they have a lot of variety, but I, I've actually had a lot of tongue bite with their stuff, so I would rather, I'd rather have Samuel Galbraith than, than any McBaron product, but yeah, I hope I hope more companies don't go out of business because uh, that would suck. I, I got a whole stockpile of pipe tobacco, so that's what I did. I just bought a lot of it, and then I was just thinking, okay, in case the apocalypse happens, I'll have a lot, you know? Thinking about doing a barbecue today. I gotta get some coal, some charcoal. Let's see here. Maybe I can adjust this. Look at all that. I just, I just plucked those a month ago. Try it that way. You don't have to see that. You don't have to see that. <laughs> uh, let's see here. You're, oh, Pete's going to grow his own tobacco. Let me know how that goes, man. Mm hmm. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, greetings from Santa Ana, California. Beautiful weather there today, too, I bet. Mm, Pete just ordered his seeds. Dude, you, you definitely have to show us what that's like. Hmm. I'm wondering, I don't even know what to talk about. Do you guys completely hate me for cutting my Nika Rusticas? Because these might actually be, they might be amazing cigars. I might be onto something here. If they made Nika Rusticas in Cigarellos, I'd totally buy like, you know, a box of those. Nope, I I like out of the box type stuff. Yeah, well me me too. That's the first time I've done that. We got eight people watching. Obviously, I'm I'm just the the feed is dying. Maybe I should just make these shorter. I feel like taking a nap all of a sudden. Jeez, lazy Sunday. Yeah, right now my wife is out of town, and uh, so she'll be back around four or five. We might go see Captain Marvel. Let me know if you guys have seen Captain Marvel. Let me know right here because uh, I've heard great things and I've heard terrible things. Start some ASMR that brings all the freaks out. Oh, I can do that. You ready? Oh, oh, oh. You ready? <laughs> the ASMR is pretty freaky, man. But I, I, I get it. You know, people like that, I guess. It's soothing. Maybe watching me is soothing, I don't know. My pool is freezing right now. I wish I could go in it. It looks really nice, but it's, it's freezing. I think we're gonna see the Cubs on Sunday. Let me know if you guys have ever been to uh, a Cubs game, or what, what? who's your favorite baseball team? How about that? What does this do? Oh, okay. I can share this. I want to share this. Create public post. Oh, I can share this. Uh, okay. Well, Discard that. You're a Mets fan. Mets. I think they're I'm pretty sure. Uh, maybe not. They might be training out here. I don't know. 
See, baseball for me is like super boring. Like, it's great for like the first like five innings, and then I'm like, get me out of here. This is this is terrible. <laughs> I'm so ADHD that that's why like spring training games are great because they're cheap, and everyone's out just hanging out drinking. Um, baseball for me though, it's like, ugh, you know, it's like get somewhere. You know, I don't know. Maybe I just haven't really watched it that much. Hey, k Berry's in Arizona, Tucson. He's in a Target. Well, I hope you get some good deals. Yeah, I think one time I was at a game, and they were, like, in the 11th or 12th inning. And I was like, we just have to leave. Like, this is getting out of hand. <laughs> I, was, I was getting, like, upset, even though it was actually a free game my company bought. A completely free game. And I remember just thinking, oh, man, this is just... It's free, and I still want to get out of here. <laughs> the birds are going crazy. Pete, I'm, I've been in Tucson before, freaking 90 degrees at 7 a.m. Yeah, it'll, it'll get... There's days in Arizona, Phoenix, Tucson, uh, Yuma... It'll never go below 100 for like two or three months. 90 degrees is like a cold day. Like 90, like we are praying for 90 degrees, you know? Yeah, 90 degrees here is very enjoyable, you know? Like for some people, 90 degrees is cold. Like they won't go in their pool when it's 90 degrees, if you, if you can believe that. It's kind of, it's kind of insane. Oh, you're from Yuma. Kay Berry's from Yuma. I was just down there. Well, I drove through there to go to San Diego. I got a few people I know down there. It's, it's like a big little town. I can't describe it. It's You're like in the middle of nowhere, but you're also in like California, but you're also in Arizona, but you're also like in Mexico. Like Yuma is really unique now. Cool. Went fishing down at the American Canal in Yuma. Huh. Never been fishing there. I'm from New York, and when it's 80, it's hot. Yeah, so New York, actually, you know, the East Coast and the Midwest, when it's 80 degrees, it is terrible because we have humidity. In the desert, we don't really have humidity, so 80 degrees feels kind of kind of nice. Um, but, yeah, when it's humid and sweltering hot, it's like, like... Michigan feels like Florida in the summertime, you know. East Coast, it gets hot. Uh, I'm, I'm really different there. Queens, oh, you're in Cali now. Yeah, Cali is like, that. I think it's the reason Cali is so expensive. It's just because of the weather. My sister lives there. It's perfect all year round. But the price of living is crazy expensive. Have you had the Bishop's Blend? I have not had Bishop's Blend. What's, what's, let us know, what the heck is Bishop's Blend? Yeah. Bishop's Blend, never even heard of it. People, people often assume that I like know everything about cigar. I don't. <laughs> uh, I like experience. Here's what I found out. I like learning and exploring. And uh, to me, that's just as fun as knowing. Uh, it's Black. It's Black Works Studio, right? Black Works Studio. Oh, we have a little burn problem here. We're going to see if it'll correct it. Actually, I'm going to try their little lighter they sent. This is a great little correction lighter. Perfect. Let's see here. Man, the sun is hot. Jeez. Let's see here. The same company that makes Green Hornet. Hmm. Well, apparently I gotta get this 
check out the company. My wife would like to know who pay for the maintenance. Get your hand. Who pays for the maintenance? Oh, oh uh, I do the maintenance back here. Obviously, I'm not doing a good job. It looks like crap. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, maintenance. Oh, my pool. Um, well, I'm renting the house, so the maintenance comes with it. It's this guy named Doug. I forgot his company. He comes out every couple of weeks. In the winter time, he hardly comes at all because you don't really need maintenance. Um, the winter time, the summer time is when you need maintenance because the heat makes it really hard to keep the chemicals right and to keep the, you have to keep the filter running 12 hours or 10 hours. Um, yeah, so it looks great right now, but the real test will be in the summertime when it's hot. Because right now we don't do anything to it. We just, we throw in chemical, we like, you know, let, just let it go. We filter it, but we, uh, the filter's on for three hours and that's what it looks like. But yeah, it gets really, summertime when it's 120 degrees, it can get green and it can, you know, it takes a lot of maintenance. So the rule of thumb is every 10 degrees is one hour of filtering. So if it's 120 degrees, hypothetically, you should be filtering the thing for like 10 to 12 hours. Okay, it's, that's a lot, it's expensive. Uh, let's see, your message redacted. No one sends my mom a turd and expects to live. Send my mom a turd and see. Hmm. The flavors are kind of gone on this thing right now. Yeah, I don't know, Pete. I don't know what he's talking about. You have to. You have to. Is that like a movie quote? I have no idea what you're talking about. Right. Now. <laughs> Sun's getting hot. We might have to move this table again. This is a mess out here, guys. <laughs> okay. Okay. We're back in the shade. Not for long, but I will fix that. Okay. Um, I must send you my best. Blanchard. Huh. What's Blanchard? I don't know what you guys are talking about. You guys are crazy. Um... You know which cigar I didn't like, I wanted to love? Was a Sembra Mesa. Sembra Mesa, never even heard of it. Sounds good, but you, I guess it wasn't that good, huh? This cigar needs a purge or something, and this is not tasting good at all. This is not nearly as good as the other one they uh, I, I got. Right now, anyway. It had a great start, though. Give a little purge. Last night I smoked the Herrera Esteli TAA exclusive. Now that sounds like a real treat from Steve Saka. Dude, Steve Saka is killing it recently. Um, Tim talks about Steve all the time and Steve actually was on his show. We believe it or not, uh, he got Rocky Patel on there too. He got, I mean, he's Tim is killing it right now, um, but yeah. The Mi Querida was really good by Steve Saka. That was really good. I don't think I've had anything else by him, I don't think. Like, Steve is like the new, uh, I don't know. Uh, Steve is the new game changer, it seems like. And the cigar, if you're in the cigar world, you know, like, one guy, he was pretty cool. Then it was the Pete Johnson. And Tatawahe is pretty cool. You know, these are like micro guys. 
Originally, it was like Rocky Patel was the guy, and then, you know, Jonathan Drew. So, like, maybe like the last few years, I've seen a lot of Steve Saka. He's kind of the new guy, it seems like. Well, from what I've seen, he's probably been around a long time. Good restaurants in the Tampa Bay area. I can't. I've never been to Tampa. I know. Oh, I've been to Tampa once. I've been to Tampa twice. I was there last year. I was there a few months ago with my dad. We went to SeaWorld in Tampa. We just went to SeaWorld for the day. We didn't actually go to any restaurants. So I can't answer that. Uh, let's see here. Uh, if you get them on Cigar Bay, I'll check out Cigar Bay. That's where I buy a lot of my cigars is Cigar Bay. Tim once had a cigar with Castro. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> There's a lot of Castros. Rumor has it, Tim had a cigar with Castro. <laughs> Nine Lug Cigar Club. I recommend it. I did a review of that one. That one and the Pravada are, are pretty good. Pravada, you might get more consistently good cigars, but the price is more expensive. But the luxury one. Cigar of the Month Club, is that was pretty good too. That was pretty darn good. And I think I actually have a, I don't know, I might have a coupon link for that one too, so I might save you 10%. Um, that's how I try new things, you know. I'm all about trying new things. Maybe I'll sit over here. And the sun is just baiting me. Let's see. Maybe I'll sit right here. Oh yeah. Look at all that weed. <laughs> oh. Oh. Okay, let's see here. This is, it's so hot. Oh my gosh, look at all that. That grew in like one month. I just pulled it all out and it grew back like instantly. Let's see, I'll turn it that way. What, wow, you got, yeah, I had, I, I sprayed everything with weed killer. Then I realized, oh, I've got a dog and the dog is peeing out here and sniffing everything. I guess Roundup is not good for dogs. So I was told to spray uh, bleach water and I was told to do vinegar water. And basically I just weed whacked everything. I weed whacked everything, raked it all up and everything just blossoms here in the winter time. So that's one month. I did it all. I completely did the whole backyard and it just went one, you know, one month later. It's believe it or not, it's crazy. That's how busy I've been. What is the most expensive cigar you've ever smoked? The most expensive cigar was a fake Bahique on my honeymoon. I knew, I th I'm pretty sure I knew it was fake. I still smoked it. I did a review of it. You can check it out on YouTube. It was like 40 bucks and it was fake. Um, I also had a really nice, uh, do you guys know what Zeno cigars? So Davidoff owns like a sister company called, uh, they're called Zeno. And I had, the, I had a Zeno cigar. I forget which one. I have another one called the Pulse. Those are really nice, those are, you know, $40 cigars. Um, let's see, I'm trying to think. Year of the Pig, Year of the Rooster, I think I've had one of those. Those are really nice, really expensive. You know, anything over 40 bucks, I, I'm like, eh, eh. I got, I got more stuff I could spend money on, you know? Like when I buy cigars, I honestly buy like $10, $5 cigars. Uh, let's see here. Hmm, maybe I should just, maybe I should sit over there. Uh, let's see here. I think that's, oh, what are your thoughts on the Israeli-Palestinian conflict? It sucks. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's, it's so complicated. 
Yeah, everyone's fighting over the same plot of land. And everyone's, that's what happens, I guess. People, we were here first. No, we were here first. No, God gave it to us. No, no, no. no, 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 no. You, you know, everyone's doing an eye for an eye kind of a thing. And that's, that never really helps anybody. Didn't they, I think we have a new embassy there. And that really caused a stir. That wasn't good. Well, maybe it was good, but maybe it wasn't. I'm thinking about doing a podcast because I like talking, but I don't know if anyone that would actually listen to it. Uh, my favorite horror film, I actually, I hate horror films. I like thrillers. Um, the, the Sixth Sense was very, very good. Have you seen The Sixth Sense? I think everyone has. That blew me away. I was like 12 or something when I saw it. It freaked me out. That was really good. So that's more of a thriller. Uh, Signs was more of a thriller. You know, these are like PG-13 thrillers. The Ring freaked me out. Uh, I couldn't even finish The Ring, actually. Um, I'm, a, I'm really, I, I'm, I'm not into, I'm not into horror. I, I like, you know, when Jason vs. Uh, Jason vs. Freddy, when that came out, that was pretty uh, entertaining. Is that a horror film? It's more of an action film, almost. Um... What's your favorite horror films, guys? I'm wondering if I should just sit there, because the sun is way too much for me right now. There we go. <laughs> this white boy cannot handle. Oh, it feels so much cooler. It's like 20 degrees cooler over here, I swear. Okay, let me see. Okay, oh wow, this is, wow, we are, this is luxury. Christina, how's it going? Christina, it's been a long time. Oh wow, this cigar is falling apart on me. The whole wrapper just popped right off. Okay. Good guy. Send some love to Christina. Number one fan. Send some love to her right now, right in the comments. She's awesome. She's one of my few female viewers. You know, she's like one of the 18%. Are you having a cigar too? We have a nice Gran Habano. They sent a ton of stuff. See, I like the view of the pool, but it was just too friggin' hot. You had a cigar. What did you have last night, Christina? Let me know. We're also drinking some Abelure. This is an amazing Scott. I can't get over it. Christina, you missed it. Are you afraid someone may poison your cigars? No, I don't think so. But I did cut a bunch of them here so I can make a little short morning cigars. Let me show you. I just, you missed it. You missed all the goods. I was cutting my Nica Rusticas in half. That way in the morning I can have a quick 20 minute smoke. So no one's gonna poison my, are they gonna poison? No, I don't think so. Why would I be afraid? Why, Michael, why would I be afraid someone's gonna poison my cigars? Like if they send them in, you mean? Maybe, I mean, there's, I mean, there's, there's creepy people out there. I cannot get over how perfect today is. It's like the perfect weather out here. 
I, uh, I like you, do you like me? Yes, I like you, do you like me? <laughs> mm, H. Upman the Banker. Oh, it's getting windy. Um, I love LF La Flor Dominicana. Those are great. The, the flatheads are just incredible. Um, let's see here. Uh, what else can we talk about? Yeah, I want to see Captain Marvel, but I heard, I've heard that this would be a good thumbnail right here. That's how you make thumbnails. If you guys don't know, you got to go like this. Here's a YouTube tip. Thumbnail. And then you grab a screenshot of that. People love it. <laughs> mm. I kind of wish every day was this nice. Because um, I know like in a month it's going to be too hot. I'll have to be in the pool. I'm going to drag this whole umbrella, put it over the pool. I think I'm going to get a bunch. Okay, so I've been, here's an idea. You guys have to help me out with this. Roller coaster face. <laughs> here's my idea for my next video. I'm going to buy a bunch of Amazon cigar uh, gifts and gadgets. And I'm going to review all of them. So you guys can really know like the best Amazon products. And I think it'd be kind of fun too, just because there's a lot out there that's garbage. So let me know if, what you think about that. Yeah, this cigar lost all of its flavor. Meh. Meh. It was great. The first like third was amazing. Cinnamon and creamy, leathery, uh, cedar. Then now it's just kind of bland. You like that idea, Pete? I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna do that. I got a thumbs up. Guys, hit a thumbs up on this video. Uh, how do I, how can I get free cigars? Um, well, uh, you could start a YouTube channel. <laughs> uh, I've been doing this since 2010. So, uh, you know, it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of patience. You have to become an influencer. I hate that term because it sounds a little pretentious, but um, eventually people start going to you for advice on cigars. And so that's how you start getting people sending you stuff. Um, so yeah, that's how you do it. Uh, you're, be you're better off though just buying cigars because it takes a long time, a lot of videos to, uh, to get free stuff. But if you're, if you're patient and you're diligent and you're passionate, people will start sending you stuff. And and you really have to uh, stick to your roots. You know, you have to be really honest. You have to really be, um, uh, you know, because otherwise the fans will know. You know, you guys can pick up when I'm, you know, if I'm lying or if I really don't like something. And so just being authentic and honest and connecting with people and, um, you know, sticking to it. That's how you get, that's how you start getting, getting stuff. Uh, you would like Black Works Studio. I dig Black Works. I definitely would like them. If you know, most of the time when people recommend something to me, I actually really like it because, you know, it's not, you know, word of mouth is really important. You know, uh, that Green Hornet was good. I haven't had the Killer Bee yet. I gotta try that too. You guys should just like, you know, Instagram. Um, send me a message on Instagram. Uh, of five cigars I should try because those are the ones that people really want to see and uh, I, I think I should do more of those videos uh, yeah people will not share if you're fake like like me showing you my, my, my weeds in my backyard like that's real you know um, uh, at the end of the day authenticity is all that really matters connection with people I heard a really great quote. It was, people are going to forget. People will forget what you teach them. They'll forget what you said. But what they're going to remember is how you made them feel. And so being authentic and really connecting with people and having um, uh, a real passion 
That's what wins. That's what the, at the end of the day, that story, your story, and your connection is what wins. And so having that, um, yeah, that's, that trumps everything, you know. Um, the content is key, you know. Uh, let's see here. And humility, too. Um, yeah, I mean, staying humble. No one, no one cares about bragging. No one, you know, people really just care about themselves. And so when you start bragging, man, that bird's loud. When you start bragging about what you have or don't have, it's like, no one cares. No one really, <laughs> at the end of the day, no one cares, you know. Um, so just share what you like and share your experiences and share, you know, why you did something. And, uh, yeah. Let's see here. Killer Bee was my favorite until I had the Bishop's Blend. I also had a Green Hornet. People keep, ta people keep talking about this, so I, it obviously must be good. See, that was a good puff right there. The last, the last few puffs were not good. That puff was good. Got here late. What you smoking? I am smoking. Let me see if I can reach it. I'm smoking a Gran Habano, Gran Reserva 2012. It's a vintage cigar they just put out. Gran Habano sent a ton of stuff. And um, so yeah, Gran Habano, it was great. The first third, this middle third was kind of bland. Right now it's tasting a little better, but it came damaged. So uh, that could be it. The whole wrapper came off the cigar. So you just miss that. Yeah, Jay, tell us how, tell us what you think about the, uh, I know it sucks, but they sent a ton. They sent like 20 cigars. I'm pushing through. You know how I push through, right? Uh, I glued the cap back on. And that really helped for a while, and then the whole cap popped off. But this stuff right here is called Perfect Repair. It's cigar glue, and this fixes a lot of cigars. And actually, I just demonstrated. I cut my Nica Rusticas in half, and then I glued them back together. So you can see right here, the cap is, uh, the wrapper is still on. So essentially, I made little morning cigars. They're short, but that's something you, you can do that with this. You know, it keeps everything nice and tight. So I cut a few of these together to demonstrate. Um, but now I have, you know, little morning cigars, little Nica Rusticas. So definitely, I have a link below for this. Um, it's pretty awesome. Pretty awesome stuff. I probably talk about this a lot because I'm really passionate about products that I actually use. And I really like things that actually work. And so, you know, for like 10 bucks or whatever, whatever this is, it's gonna save a lot of cigars. Okay, what did I miss? Uh, do you have any enemies? Um, yeah, my, uh, I don't know if I have enemies, but Cigar Obsession, he, he does not like me. When I first, okay, so here's a story. Uh, Brian Glenn, when I first started in like 2009, 2010, uh, I, had, I had a cigar website, honestcigarreviews.com. And I was asking Brian Glenn, hey, I see you're doing YouTube stuff. And I asked him, how do you, do you have any tips? You know, because uh, I'm a big fan. And I, I emailed him. I said, do you have any tips or suggestions? And then um, no response. And then I realized he had blocked me completely. So uh, I guess he didn't like me. Uh, he, maybe he saw me as competition. At the time, it was Brian Glenn and me. That's all there was out there. And then Derek, uh, I forgot his name, Derek. I forget his channel. He was doing stuff shortly after. Uh, Kyle Cigar Reviews, he was doing stuff right after. But for a few years, it was just Brian Glenn and it was me. So uh, he still blocked me. Yeah, I, I don't really see it. I don't really see this competition either, so. You know, there's plenty of space on the web to have a community um, and grow together. So I, I, I don't know why he would block me. I didn't even have any subscribers. So, um, yeah. Brian Glenn, uh, he, he, he has an attitude to him. 
I mean, I, I was 18 or 19, and he just kind of seemed like a dick. <laughs> but I, I got nothing against the guy, you know, it's not like I, I don't watch him or anything. Um, no, this is not pectin. This is um, a goma, cigar glue, and they put fiber in there, cellulose fibers. So it's not pectin. It's whatever they use to actually bind cigars. But you, you can actually use pectin. I use pectin whenever I roll my own cigars. Um, yeah, Brian Glenn. Let's see here. Yeah, it seems like Brian doesn't like a lot of people. Um, how does he respond? He doesn't respond. He blocked me completely. Brian, um, he just kind of is on his own little wave, his own little island. And um, that's okay. I got people like Tim uh, and Brad in my life. <laughs> you know, like Tim and Brad, they invite me over. You know, they're real friends. Uh, I want to do something with Zeal Cigars soon. Because uh, when Brad, when he when he started his company, the first thing he did was he emailed me, he texted me, I got his number. Same thing with Tim, you know. So there's room to grow. There's no, there's no such thing as like a monopoly on the web. And so it's all about connection and community. We're back to this again, you know. And so for Brian to, you know, kind of shut people out like that, I don't know, I thought that was kind of weird. Um, whatever, you know. Yeah, we should all be friends. Um, here's the thing is like, at the end of the day, a cigar, cigars bring people together. And when, when you start, you know, creating like little clans, no one cares. <laughs> you know, it, whatever, you know. But whatever Brian's doing, it's working. He's got 100,000, I got 10,000. So I don't think we're in, we're not in competition anyway. You know what I mean? Uh, are you a U.S. citizen? If you are afraid of ICE, is it going to get you? I'm a U.S. citizen, not afraid of ICE. <laughs> um, let's see here. All the cool folks are in Arizona. It's true. Arizona and Florida, those are the two main states where I see people. Um, all the cool people are here. I tell you what, it's, it's pretty much true. And, um, yeah. <laughs> That's all I can say about that. Uh, I'll stick with you, bro. Thank you, man. Makes me feel better. Um, I saw boxes of Famous Smoke Shop for 30 bucks. No way. I love Famous. Uh, I guess I'll start some cigar videos from Cali. Dude, you got to start your own stuff from Cali. That'd be awesome. I don't know any California cigar channels. So putting your own spin on it, your own view, being authentic, and just do it. You know, do, do one video a week. You know, try that. That'd be awesome. I would, I, I would, sub I'm going to subscribe to you. Let me know when you create a channel. I'll subscribe. And I don't do, I mean, I, I, my life doesn't revolve around cigars, you know. I've got, uh, I review other things and I've got a full-time job and I got this and this and, you know. So, I don't really care. I like cigars. I want to show you guys my cigar experience, but, you know, it's not all I do, so that's why I'm also like, I don't care, you know. Uh, I will let you know via Instagram. Yeah, message me on Instagram. Instagram is the best way to get a hold of me. I answer all of my comments. I message everyone directly, and uh, Instagram's where it's at. You're going to see behind the, behind the scenes stuff there. Pete, subscribe to mine when I build the tobacco farm. I will, dude. I will. That's definitely, see, that's something new. No one's talking about growing tobacco. So that is unique and that's special and that's something that only you have over other people. So you can capitalize on that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna subscribe to that. Uh, now I'm just starting a channel. Yeah, well, do it, man. The hardest part's getting started, I tell you what. This cigar is... Had it's, it's definitely not the easiest. <laughs> it's been a pain in the butt, this cigar has been. 
Oh, Christina said something. Okay, hold on. Let me go back. Okay, hold on. This, this stand keeps moving here. Okay. So, James, I have a new addiction. So, I've been to the Tor, Torb Claw game from Japan. I play for kid stuff. I'm becoming obsessed. Tor, Torba Claw? What the heck is Torba Claw? It's a game from Japan. Torba Claw. I might have to get into that. Torba Claw. My Instagram is below in the description. Honest James Reviews. That's my Instagram handle. Uh, but all of my stuff is in the link below, so it should be there. Yeah, I guess for me, I think my channel is less about cigars and more just about... I think it's slowly evolving into more just life, my life. And so, cigars are a part of my life. It's a claw game that you play an app on the cell phone and you win free stuff. I'm gonna check it out right now. Tour de Claw? Torb de Claw? Huh. Win free stuff. And it's from Japan. And it's like a claw that comes down and you pick stuff up, right? You are Jeherf Flog. Jeherf Flog. I'm, add me right now on Instagram and I'll, I'll follow you back. What is your favorite whiskey? Um, recently, it's been Abelure, Abelure 12. Um, that's a very good one. But I drink a lot of bullet bourbon. I mix that a lot with orange bitters. Um, but Abelure is very good. I got Lagavulin 16 is very good. This is just a great, I find that this Abelure, whatever, I don't know, it's a sweeter Highland Scotch. It's great, it's great for cigars. So recently it's been that. Mm. Yeah, Buffalo Trace is great. Um, and guess what? My my mother-in-law, she might get a job with Diageo. And Diageo is a brand that makes a ton of different uh, spirits. They have Johnny Walker. They've got Captain Morgan. They've got gin. They've got... I mean, they do a lot. Diageo is probably the biggest alcohol manufacturer. And so I'm hoping maybe if she gets the job... Maybe I will get, I don't know, cheaper stuff. I don't, <laughs> I'm just thinking it might be kind of cool to, to get a behind the scenes look, you know? Yeah, so Captain Morgan's actually not very good, but they have a few higher end stuff that's pretty good actually. Yeah, if she, if she gets free stuff, that'd be awesome. But I, I would like the, you know, limited edition stuff the stuff you know i don't know maybe maybe she might get perks that's all i'm saying if she gets perks maybe i'll get perks i i don't know um but uh yeah i have a lot of alcohol already so it's not like i need any more but that would be cool if, if i can get a tour like behind the scenes that would be awesome wouldn't it i would totally do a a video on that if i had a tour of behind the scenes of whatever factory she works at i do like beer that bird's loud. Beer is, um, honestly, I like all kinds of beer, but it gives me a gut. And the, that's the biggest issue with beer is the bloat. Um, all right, see you, Christina. Peace out. I like stouts, porters. Summertime, I like half of ice and, you know, wheat beers. Um, actually, this sounds weird, but Tecate... Get yourself Tecate with some lime and some Bloody Mary mix. We call that a michelada. So good. Perfect for summertime. Red beer. Some people call that red beer. Frank Zappa. Yeah, well, I like Frank Zappa, but I don't listen to him. He's definitely a guitar inspiration. I play a lot of guitar, so Zappa is definitely um, inspirational. Yeah, dude, Tecate with lime is like, it's it's better than Corona, hands down. It's cheaper and better. It's probably the best Mexican beer, you know, with lime. So get yourself some Tecate, lime, a little bit of salt. You're going to love it. You're going to love it. <clears throat> Only problem is it makes you kind of, I got a little belly right here. So if Tecate Light is pretty good, but not as good as regular. 
but I think it has like two carbs or something. I'm gonna do small Glen Morangi and another Gar. Yeah, dude, the Quinta Reuben from them is really good. I've got a little baby bottle left. Glen Morangi with um, their Quinta Reuben and they have another one that's good. The regular label is decent. It's more affordable. I, I, I have a bottle. Let's see, what else did I miss? You gotta take out the guitar sometime during a... Dude, I should. I was just on Instagram jamming. I was playing some Sultans of Swing. What is that? Who, who, who is that? Dun, 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 dun. Um, I just forgot the guitarist's name. I like playing that song. It's a great song to warm up on. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> yeah, so beer is great, right? But here, the problem, you know, I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm almost 30, and it adds on quick, you know what I mean? Like, the beer gut is for real. Like, you have two a day, all of a sudden, like, by the end of the week, you're like, tubby, you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, long time no see. How's it going, Andy? Uh, let's see here. I stopped drinking beer. Yeah, so that's why, you know, uh, spirits are high in calories, but you don't drink a lot of it, you know, and it doesn't have the carbs. So I prefer spirits. What I should do is have guitar, uh, spirits, cigars, and we'll have like a whole guitar cigar club. Yeah, get yourself some whiskey, save on the carbs, and um, yeah, I don't know, does this even have, I wonder how much a shot is, it's probably a lot, it's probably a couple hundred calories, but you don't get the blow. Dude, these glasses, these are prescription. Zenioptical.com. They look pretty good on me. And they were uh, polarized. This dog is loud. Polarized, 60 bucks prescription. Zenioptical.com. These are killer. I'm going to buy more of these. I get more compliments on these glasses uh, than anything. Yeah, dude. Zenny Optical. Uh, the drink. Oh, yes. The drink glass. Glen Morangy, 10 bucks. Uh, I think I have a link below for these on Amazon. These will change your, your whiskey game. Um, yeah, I didn't think these glasses, uh, honestly, I never thought a glass could change your experience, but these do. They're, you know, you can really smell toffee and caramel and this has like a raw sugar smell. And without this glass, I wouldn't be able to experience that. Pretty good. Glen, Glen Karen. Have you ever smoked a blunt? Never smoked a blunt. Maybe I should. <laughs> um, I've never smoked weed. Um, I've tried the vape pen once. Um, and I tried an edible once with my mom. Does that count? We were in California and we tried it and it was all right. It was pretty fun. I, I would do it again, but I've never smoked weed. <laughs> I'm kind of a straight edge guy, so I don't, I'm not really into that. You grew for dispensaries, no way. So dispensaries are, um, they're everywhere in California. You smoked a lot. See, when you when you grow it, you probably have to know what's good, you know. And now they have all kinds of crazy stuff with different strands and hybrids and this and that. And um, as the cannabis industry becomes more and more legal, you're going to see a lot more stuff. I bet. Someone sent me CBD peanut butter, so I'm going to do a chat. I'm going to do a review on that on my other channel. But yeah, I'm not really. I'm not huge into the marijuana. 
wax, oil, hash. That stuff is crazy. That's that's the dabs, right? People, they dab with it, right? Um, the wax is like, you superheat the glass and then you dab it in there. I've seen videos on it, I've just never done it. So what what is hash versus wax? I don't, I think wax is like pressed out and hash is like cooked up or something, I don't know. Uh, I do believe in free will. Um, I believe in free will and I believe in destiny. So it's kind of both. But yeah, I think I believe in free will. For the most part, yeah. That's really uh, philosophical, wow. Wax is made with butane. Used to be hash, I use ice and water. Oh. Yeah, so. Uh, marijuana, I, I guess it can make you relax, but it can make you par uh, paranoid. So, but I really can't have it anyway for my job, you know. You, you, you can get fired. Um, I, we don't, I don't think we drug test, but, you know, if they did, maybe, maybe I could get in trouble, you know. I don't know. Um, so while it's completely legal, you could still get fired for it. You know, that's, that's the scary part. I think marijuana, though, is less scary than what I... I, I grew up thinking marijuana was the, the devil. And now I'm thinking, oh, no, it's actually helped a lot of people with a lot of things. And so I see it more now. The older I get, the more I see marijuana as medicine. Um, and five years ago, I would have said, that's crazy. It's a drug. And it's illegal. But, you know, I think I'm a little bit more aware of... It's really not, it's really not that, there's nothing really to it, you know what I mean? Saw a box of La Aurora for 40 bucks at Famous. Dude, I love La Aurora, especially, especially the Preferidos, little Perfectos, those are killer. I have a family member that stutters so much when she smokes, it loosens her tongue. Yeah, so some people who have neurological disorders, cannabis is great for them, uh, especially if you are prone to seizures, especially if you are prone to anxiety, um, uh, you know, cerebral palsy and, and other things like that. Um, it's been great for those people. Um, so I can see why stuttering, it can calm you down, maybe suppress your nervous system and uh, regulate your nervous, I don't know. That's, you know, I'm not an expert. I just, that's what I heard. This cigar is getting really bitter, blech. Blech. My favorite non-cigar YouTube channel. I watch a lot of YouTube. Um, I'm really into Gary Vaynerchuk. He's a business entrepreneur guy. I'm, I love Good Mythical Morning. That's a morning. It's a TV. It's a show. It's a silly show, but I love it. Good Mythical Morning. Um, I love camera. Uh, I'm really into like camera gear, and and so I like Peter McKinnon, Casey Neistat. I love. Um, uh, I like a lot of stuff. Um, I'm trying to think. Recently, I've been into. Um, uh, I like uh, mo uh, channels that talk about movies. I'm really into movies. Movie reviewers. Uh, Jeremy Johns, he's really fun to watch. His movie reviews. I really like um, guns. Um, I don't have a gun, but I like learning about them. Thinking about getting a Glock, Glock 43. So I watch gun stuff recently about that. Um, I like... Uh, I like the Whiskey Vault. The Whiskey Vault is great because the Whiskey Vault, you learn about whiskey. My, oh man, this is the third or fourth time I've talked about, my occupation, people always ask me, so I do YouTube part time, but my full time job is I'm, I'm a, a social worker. I help kids get adopted. And so I take pictures and videos and I meet families and I, I play matchmaker to help kids get adopted. So that's my full time job. 
Yeah, so this is starting to get really meh. Blech. That one's gotta go. Maybe I'll smoke one of these bad boys. The half. The uh, uh, Nika Rustica. What do you think? I'll smoke it. Social worker by day, YouTuber by night. Yep. Social work's kind of weird. When you say, so oh, this is good. When you say social worker, too, you think of, like, uh, you know, there's a lot you can do with social work. So that's what I got my, my master's in. And, um, yeah, so it's really cool. I, I get to meet kids. I drive around Phoenix. I meet kids, you know, talk with them about adoption, take pictures and videos of them. And it's just kind of fun because I, it's really flexible. I can work from home a lot. I drive around a lot, and I can use my I can use my video and, and photo skills to help kids get adopted. So it's really it's a really unique job. Um, but yeah, and then I do YouTube about 20 hours a week or so. Review all kinds of stuff here. You know, you guys know that. Uh, let's see, your Glock for great for concealed carry unless you got a magazine restriction. Yeah, so Glock 43 I would probably get just because it's single stack. Although they have a new, the new SIG, there's a new SIG called the SIG P30, P365, 365. It's, it's uh, double stacked, but it's just as small as a Glock 43. So I'm thinking about getting that one because it has 10 rounds. But I want something that's super concealable that I could pocket carry, you know. And I think the Glock, even the Glock 43 might be a little big for pocket carry. Something simple and easy. So yeah. Yeah, this is a little, uh, this is the Nika Rustica that I cut in half. And I figured I'd try it cut in half just because it's short and I'm, I'm almost done smoking here. So I cut it in half and now we're enjoying it. it tastes pretty good. Yeah, that was the first part of the show. I, I cut these in half and I glued them back together with perfect repair. Tastes good. And this could be a great morning cigar, you know, 20 minutes. Yeah, thank you, Pete. That's good. That's a full bodied, very good. Nika Rustica is the cheapest, best cigar I've had in a long time, you know. I, I could see myself buying another box of these. That's how I, I love this, you know, and it's broadleaf. I'm a big fan of broadleaf because it's sugary and sweet. Then it has the uh, Nicaraguan earthy flavors. This is a killer cigar right here. Very good. All right, any more questions? I should. This is kind of cool. It's a mini. Rustica. Look into the PPQ as well. They just released a subcompact for pocket carry. You can find a Beretta Tomcat by it. Been looking for one for years. The great part about Arizona is I could literally just go any any gun shop. We have gun shows every couple months and they have a huge variety here and you can actually just walk out with it. You don't even need, you don't really need CCW, I guess. You can open carry here, but I, I wouldn't do that anyway. But yeah, and a, a CCW class is like four hours long. Um, obviously, I would want more training, so I would go to the, you know, the range once a week to um, to really get confident, you know. And something I can just kind of leave in the car too would be great. Um, but it gets really hot in cars here, so I don't know if I want a gun in 120 degrees. Call this the Chico Rustico. I like that, dude. Chico Rustica. Chica, what'd you call it? Chica Rastica. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look into that PPQ because that's kind of like the James Bond gun, I think. 
Chico Rustico. I like that, dude. Julio, good idea. Uh, what is the worst film I've ever seen? That's what Damien said. Ooh, the worst film. Worst film I've ever seen. Have you seen Bur uh, Buried? Uh, that was really bad. I just couldn't finish it. The, the bad movies are the ones that you watch all the way through and then you're mad that you watched it. The really bad movies, you don't, you just stop them and you don't waste your time. But the movies that are just bad enough to keep watching but not good at all, that you waste your time, those are the really bad movies. This is a <laughs> this little cheek, what'd you call it? Uh, Chico Rustica? Killer. I'll make this the thumbnail. <laughs> That's your thumbnail right there. Human centipede, never want to see that. Sounds disgusting. Yes, I love pipes. I'm going to have a nice pipe for St. Patrick's Day. I have a green Chris Morgan pipe. It's my St. Patrick's Day pipe. Love it. Kill I love pipes. What else? What else we talk about? What's the worst movie you guys have ever seen? Let me ask you that. What's the worst movie you've ever seen? You've seen all three, dude. You should like. You gotta go to counseling for that, man. That those movies are sick. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Without a paddle, I like that movie, dude. Without a paddle was great. It was fun. It was like this. I don't know. I had like this two thousands nostalgia to it. Man of Steel was as eh, okay. Yeah, there was a lot of stuff wrong. Man of Steel should have been great, and it just kind of felt dark and bland. Yes, I carry a Benchmade. I, I have a few uh, Benchmades I carry. I have a Bug Out and an Osborne, and I have a cheap Gonzo I carry a lot. I also have a, uh, a Leatherman Wave. I carry that in my, my backpack everywhere I go, and it's great because Le Leatherman Wave is just... It saves the day a lot. And you can buy those cheap at pawn shops. Um, so yeah, Benchmade and Leatherman, love them, love them. What else? An hour and 20 minutes. I feel like I should end these things. I just, I never know how to actually end a live stream because it's awkward. It's me talking to a camera, but I'm talking to you guys. You know, I don't have an agenda, so I just, it's awkward. Still kicking around on the Be More. Yes. Um, I try, I'm going to start doing, uh, I, I was doing roasting shows every Sunday. Today it was so nice, I decided not to roast. But yeah, every Sunday I roast on my Be More. It's killer. It's really killer. And um, hopefully, when they come out with the next roaster, uh, I can do a brand deal with them and have more consistent content. Um, so that's what I'm hoping for, because I'm a huge advocate for home roasting coffee. And if you guys have never roasted your own coffee, you got to do it. It's, it's fun. It's easy. Best coffee of your life. I was never involved in 9-11. Uh, 9-11, what the? 9-11, okay, when 9-11 happened, I was 11. <laughs> so I was in sixth grade and I remember waking up, going to school and we were watching it live on TV and we were like freaking out and someone said, the, this is what they told us. They said the tourists, the tourists hit the, the the towers, and I was like, what towers? Why would a tourist do something like that? And um, then someone else came by and said, turn off your TVs, turn off your TVs. So we had to turn off our TV. 
and the whole school was like on lockdown and we were freaking out because we didn't know what the heck a tourist or a terrorist was and um and then yeah we, we like we saw the first one hit it was like live and then we had to turn the tv off we came home we saw it all over the news we were debating whether we should close school down we were uh super scared no one even uh, the word terrorist really wasn't even that popular um you know and so something at that time it was like i don't even know what's going on and um so we'd see that in the news every day for like a whole year and um it was really scary. I was a sixth grade. I was 11 years old. So I didn't even know what the heck. I hardly even knew what the Twin Towers were. Once, Once Upon a Forest is my least favorite movie because he made... Once Upon a Forest is my least favorite movie because he made me cry so bad. Yeah, Forrest Gump. I love that movie. I cried so much. Forrest Gump. I actually, I have a funny story too. When that movie came out, I was like six, right? So, um, I, my, my parents told me this story because I don't remember it. They said that we were at this restaurant and there was some guy waiting in line to be seated and apparently he looked like Tom Hanks. And so what I did was I stood up in my booth and I said, Mom, Dad, look, it, it's Forrest Gump. It's Forrest Gump. And my parents were like trying to calm me down and um, the whole restaurant got up and was like looking for this guy. And the guy got so embarrassed, he actually had to leave the restaurant. <laughs> so apparently I thought it was Forrest Gump. Apocalypse Now, never seen it. Never seen Apocalypse Now. You know it's a really good movie green mile that's a good movie shawshank redemption that'll get you crying schindler's list that'll get you crying you know all these 90s and 2000 movies oh those are good those are real those are my favorite you watch them once or twice because they're so sad but they're they're good what else is good um We were soldiers. Never seen We Were Shul. Uh, I should see that too. Saving Private Ryan was good. Uh, Pearl Harbor was incredible. I cried in that movie too. Pearl Harbor. There's a, there's a scene in Pearl Harbor when the girl was marking people on their forehead with ch with lipstick because they were just bombed. And in the movie, they didn't have enough space. So the people who were like terminally ill who were just gonna die, she marked them because she knew that they weren't gonna make it. So that way they could take the people who had a chance to live into the hospital to care for them. And so when she's marking people, I was just like, ah, he's gonna die, he's a dead man. And that, that, that movie, I was crying like crazy. Oh my God, I was afraid I was gonna get drafted from that movie. Paranoid. <laughs> That's a good little cigar, isn't it? What else? Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. That was a really surprisingly funny movie. Clockwork Orange was great for its time. A bit of Thai ultraviolet. Yeah, um... Yeah, Clockwork Orange was really good. When he's when they have his eyes like glued open, that freaked me out. But that was a really good. I think it's Stanley Kubrick. Stanley Kubrick is legendary. Uh, he is an incredible director. Stanley Kubrick. Um, kind of like Alfred Hitchcock, I think. They're both just killer directors. Um, Clockwork Orange. Definitely got to see it. And that's kind of like futuristic utopian like it kind of reminds me of today a little bit like where we're going so it's pretty it's relatively accurate what else
Doctor Strange Love. What the heck is that? Is that a 007 movie? My favorite rye. I don't know. I haven't had a lot of ryes, but I drink bullet rye a lot. Templeton rye is probably the most popular one. I don't have a lot of experience with rye. Sorry. I like rye. Normally I just buy scotch or bourbon. You have to tell me what, what rye to buy. What rye to buy. That's what you gotta, you have to help me out with that. Oh, yeah, yeah. oh, oh, Doctor Strange Love is a Kubrick film. I need to see that. So I'm kind of like learning about these directors, like, you know, I, I, I just need to watch it. It's a scary thing to buy a bottle of rye, but I haven't had good luck. It's a scary thing to buy a bottle of rye, but I've had good luck with Manhattan rye. Oh, Manhattan, that's a brand. I like making Manhattans with rye, so I'm gonna have to try out Manhattan Tuffle, Tuffle Town Distillery. Check it out, Tuffle Town. If I see it, I'll buy it. I gotta get into rum too. People keep saying different different rums I gotta try, and rum rum is pretty affordable compared to uh, you know other spirits. What else? Papa Pilar is good for rum. Papa Pilar is good for rum. I love Captain Morgan private stock. Yeah, private stock is great. Like, it's a good, cheap rum. Uh, I was really into, um, in, in college, when I had no money, we would drink Bacardi Oakheart. That was pretty good with Coke. Bacardi Oakheart is cheap, decent for the price. You know, that was a great mixer. Um, you could almost drink it by itself, but it's a little too sweet. But I remember drinking a lot of Bacardi in, in, in college. I feel so relaxed right now. I'm like, I'm like in Zen right now. Oh yeah. Do you guys ever get into Zen mode? Too much zen, too much zen. Do you like absinthe? Um, I've never had absinthe by itself. Normally it's a few drops in a drink. So I don't really have a lot of experience with absinthe. Well, I've been told that absinthe is kind of like a black or dark licorice flavor. Yeah, see, in college, people, we were poor, right? So we drank really crappy rum, really crappy. Uh, we, we, we used to drink this, um, it's, it's a, a flavored, oh, I got so sick on it. It was a flavored vodka called Burnett's. Super cheap, bottom of the shelf. Ugh, it's just terrible. We had pomegranate. I got really sick on pomegranate Burnett's. Terrible. Vodka. Don't don't get brunettes. Barf. Yeah, bar complete barf. Fourteen dollar handles. And the problem with cheap spirits is they add coloring and preservatives and other ingredients that also make you not they're not good for you. Yeah, UV vodka. Blah. So right now, pretty much all we drink is Pinnacle and Tito's vodka. This is pretty good vodka. Ugh. Bad vodka is bad. Good vodka? Okay, that's pretty good. Tito's is good. I like Tito's. You buy a handle of it at Costco, it lasts us a long time. You know, that is something you could have with lime, some gin. Gin, lime, and a little bit of vodka. Some soda water, oh yeah, that's good. I could do that.
Deep Eddie's vodka is good too, including their flavored vodkas. I, I'll have to try that. I've been flavoring my own. It's a big flame. Where's my little guy? Where's my little guy? Okay, my little guy. Okay, there we go. These little lighters like this, they're great for touch-ups. Yeah, Tito's. Grey Goose is actually pretty overrated. Grey Goose is relatively expensive for what it is. I find that Tito's is much better. And I think they make Tito's with corn, and that might be why it's better. It's a little bit smoother. Um, Tito's, is, I think, is made out of Texas, so I don't know, it's pretty good. Uh, do you support the Cuban embargo? For the most part, no. Uh, I don't think we have anything to worry about <laughs> with Cuba. Um, uh, blah. I, I want Cuban cigars. I, I think that's something that you know, I don't know, like I, I, I was at this conference, right? And I was meeting, well, I met a, a Russian, I met a lot of Russians and they're like, we don't understand. We were both talking about this. Like I have nothing against Russia. Like Russia didn't do anything to, to us. We didn't do anything to Russia. I mean, nothing huge. Cold War happened in the eighties. And so the idea that we should still have an embargo or that like communism is like taken over. Some of this stuff is just a little out of hand. Um, so I've got nothing against Cuba. I don't really support a lot of what Cuba does to their people, and that's a problem. But I don't think us having an embargo is gonna make much of a difference for either country. I don't know, that's just my opinion. Belvedere, uh, haven't had it, I want Belvedere. Jay says, how crooked do you allow your burn to get before you touch it up? Well, as soon as it becomes like annoying, then I touch it up. That's pretty much, if it gets like a half inch messed up, I'll probably touch it up. Surprisingly windy today. Well, I think that's about it today. An hour and 33 minutes. Talked a lot. We've shared a lot. We talked about movies. We talked about Grand Habano and my real thoughts. They're pretty good, um, especially for the price. Some of them, this one exploded on me. The last one I had wasn't like that. And uh, yeah, so we cut cigars in half. I showed you the perfect repair. This stuff is killer. Get some in the link below. We talked about spirits. We talked about bad and good spirits. We've talked about, I already said movies, right? Yeah, it was a pretty good live feed. Thank you guys for watching. Um, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Also, if you have uh, any questions or you want to direct message me, you can email me. Go to my Instagram. I also, I answer all my Instagram stuff. So go there as well. And uh, man, these little Nika Rusticus I cut in half. They're a great little cigar.